three, two, two one. one. Mighty, Mighty Mouse! Mouse. Yes. Yes. Here three. I come to save the day! Hey there, welcome to Board Game Barrister, our local game shop in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It is Tuesday, and every Tuesday we get to play a game. Today we played Connect Team, a surprisingly awesome little game where we were playing sets of cards out under the table and then trying to come up with silly in-between words that they all match at. We'll talk about how that works in just a second here. I'm here with my fellow barristers, Gordon, Glenn, and Elizabeth, and we're going to talk you through our four biggest things that we think you should know about the game before you play, but before we do that, we are going to talk about how the game plays. Let's talk about Connect Team. This is a cooperative game where we're going to try to score as many points as possible together and then we'll get a rating at the end of the game based on how well we did. The entire game is played in two big phases and when the game starts we're going to deal a hand of word cards to each player. In the first phase of the game we're going to be playing cards out onto the table to try to set up possible connections for later. So on my turn I could play the card Celebrity. From then on every player at the table has a couple different options on their turn. They can either play a card out alone to start a new connection of its own or if they have a card in their hand that they think makes a good connection with one or more cards that are already on the table, they can make a connection with that card, so they could play in nature onto my celebrity card. We're going to keep going around the table, either creating a new connection or extending a currently existing connection until the game looks a little bit like this. Once we've all played our entire hands of cards onto the table, that means this phase is over and we're going to move on to the next phase where we try to validate the connections we've made. In the second phase, we're going to keep taking turns around the table, but now, whenever it's our turn, we'll turn to the player on our left and we'll try to validate a connection with that player. We're going to do that by looking out at all the connections on the table and then identifying and discussing the ones that we think we have a good answer for that might be the same as that player's. Once we've settled on one that we want to try, maybe the winter festive clothing that's close to the fire, then we're going to touch fingertips with that that player on our left, count down from three, three, two, one, and both say the word we think it is. Say we both said stockings for the winter festive clothing that's close to the fire. That means we have validated that connection, which is worth one point. So we'll take one of those cards to represent that point and tuck that away for later. Now if we fail to validate the connection, say black and food didn't quite narrow it down far enough for us and one player said pudding and the other player said burned, then we fail on that validation, those cards just get discarded and we don't score any points for that one. We have one other way to score points, and that is through the these objective cards. We're going to take three random objectives each game, and these are going to be things like validate the first connection of the game or validate two connections in a row. And every time we validate a connection that satisfies one of these conditions, we can take one of these cards. We'll keep going around the circle, trying to validate connections with the player on our left, maybe scoring points if we do it right until we've run all the way out of all the connections, and then we'll score up our final points. But there is one other thing we can do to help each other out in this game, and that is with the one help card that each player gets at the start of the game. Anytime you want, when two other players are about to attempt to validate a connection, you can use your help card, turn it over to the X, and then you can become the third finger in that connection trying to help them out. In a case where there is someone helping with a connection and there's three people trying to connect at once, all that we need to do is have two of those people say the same word, and then we still score that point like we would normally. Once we've attempted our final connection and seen whether or not we were successful, the game is going to end, and then we're going to look at the back cover of the rulebook to see our rating and see how well we did. All right, let's talk about how our game went. Uh, ours took us about 15 minutes. We played twice in a half hour. It was great, to, a great game to play twice, especially when you fail terribly the first time. Uh, so 15 minutes to play, super cut and dry. And then we played with four players, and that felt amazing with this game. It meant that you were taking your turn with the person on your right when it was their turn, then it was your turn to play with the person on your left, and then you had a couple turns on the other side of the table where you could jump in with your help card if you wanted to. So four players felt amazing. It plays three to six players, and I'm sure it's great with all of those, but if you can get it with four, super fun. Well, I can't not, so there you are. <laughs> this is our chance to get out of the bottom category. No, it's you are certainly coming from a different planet with opposing <laughs> cultures and manners. Uh -huh. We can still get out. If we score this one, let's connect. Three, Three two, two, one. one. Poop. Okay. <laughs> What'd you say? Bladder. It's, <laughs> it's poop. <laughs> so one of the things I really like about Connect Team is it's one of those "What do these have in common?" games, which there's a great many of those out there. Um, what I what is really unique about this game though is it kind of bridges the gap between you know the older competitive can you name the right thing type of game mm -hmm. into the more newer like cooperative you know select an answer but you're not allowed to talk about it this game has both 
communication, like a little bit of communication with mm -hmm. the other players, and ha it's open-ended, which makes it really replayable um, because you can come up with multiple possible answers for the list of words that you have before you. So it, it makes it a nice twist on that rendition. And, and not just that you have multiple options, even if you miss it, you weren't technically wrong, you just didn't get the connection. Mm -hmm. okay. Sure. Yes. Yes? Yeah, sure. Okay. Some, some are sharp at the beach? Uh, yep. Oh, We're in. Oh, okay. We're in it. Three, Three two, two, one. Shells! Sunglasses. <laughs> Literally <laughs> sharp versus figuratively sharp. Oh. Oh. Ah. Personally, I was really happy with how they divided the two phases of play. The entire game plays in one phase where we're putting cards on the table, and then one phase where we're making guesses at where the connections between those cards are, and then you're done. That's the entire game. But it's super cool. You spend about five minutes putting cards down on the table. You've got a hand of cards nobody else can see that whole time. Nobody's talking about the cards in their hand. You can make a little bit of like snarky jokes about the cards on the table, but there's like no communication or strategy involved in this part. You're just trying to get cards out on connections that you see and hoping someone else sees the same. But then we move into the second phase where we're actually trying to correctly identify those and communication is totally essential in that part. This part, you, you open up and you start talking about, I've got one for this set, does anybody else have one for that? Cool, you wanna connect on that later, we can do this one. And it becomes this really interesting strategy game where prior to that it was just kind of this game where you're laughing about the silly cards in your hand and then trying to find a good place to put them down on the table. <laughs> <laughs> Europe for kids. <laughs> well, I'm putting it here because I have an answer for that. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Europe for kids on a mountain. I have one. Get him. Because I have nothing for that. All right. All right. Well, I have a great one for this. But no, I, have, I have. I have. You have nothing for this. I have nothing for that. This yeah. one I totally know. Three, you do. two, right, one. The sound, sound of music. music. <laughs> Something that I kind of thought was a, a non-issue until I played it, is the objective cards. Having each game, we have three different objectives, and each of the object objective cards gives you an extra point uh, if, you, if you complete it. And that can be like, connect on the first uh, attempt of the game or connect on the last attempt of the game. And that, at first blush, I thought, you know, really, what's the point of this? But it gives just enough guidance, just enough structure to say, hey, you know what, you know, like maybe we can connect on that one, but we're not going first. Mm -hmm. So we need to, you know, someone else needs to, to take an attempt at that. I really appreciated that, and that little bit of guidance uh, gave some focus to a little bit of that communication, a little bit of that table talk, and also gave a little bit of structure to the strategy of what you wanted to choose when. All right, the first one's gotta be perfect though, no pressure. Mm. Yep. Three, Three two, two, one, one. John, John Deere. Deere. Oh, okay, thank God. <laughs> I really like these cards here. This is the kind of, you jump in when it's not your turn because it's, you know, Gordon and Andy have a really good answer, they think, but I also think I have a really good answer. And it kind of increases our odds of getting it right because now we've got three people in on it. And sometimes that also plays into an objective card where we can get that bonus point because three of us got in. Mm -hmm. But it can give you that, just a little bit extra when they think they have a good connection, but they both have great answers, <laughs> but they're not the same. And then, Odds are, I might match one of them. All right, here we go. Oh. Ooh, three-way. Yep. Three, two, two one, change five. five. Uh, yes. Boom. Yes. Can I also just say that structurally, this could have been the exact same game as it is, but you didn't have to touch fingertips to one another. But the fact that they put a rule in where you have to touch fingertips, I'm going to remember that I played this game and it's the game where you touch fingertips. So good on you guys for adding a weird little rule like that just to add that extra little memorability. All right. Well, I think that about does it for our quick takeaways from our first couple of games of Connecting. We had a great time with it and we hope you had a fun time watching. If you want to see more videos like this one, we post them every single week. You can hit that subscribe button. Otherwise, comment, like, all that good stuff, and we'll see you next week when we come on back. Thanks for watching. <laughs>